Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, I love unusual repertoire. I love discovering new composers. If you've been watching these videos, you know I talk about them just about as often as I talk about the standard classics because there is so much fabulous music out there that just doesn't get the attention it deserves. There is also so much music out there that richly deserves its obscurity. And here's one of them. This is on CPO, the Georg Wilhelm Rauchenecker. Symphony Number no. One, Orient, their Orientalish fantasy, and a very peculiar piece called Symphonisches Tonwerk im Still einer Overture. In other words, it's an overture, but in order to make it sound very sophisticated and deep and important and justify its interminable 14 minutes and 36 seconds in length, Rauchenecker calls it the symphonic tone piece or tone work in the style of an overture. I mean, you know, it says something about his style of composition that he would adopt that grammatical style in describing such an uninteresting, ordinary piece of schlock. I mean, it's awful. Well, let's, let's, let's get, get to that in a minute. What are his dates here? Um, 1844 to 1906. He had a very interesting life, actually. He was a big Wagnerian. He hung out with the Bambulos and the Wagners and the people and the stuff. He taught in Berlin. He was a conductor with the Berlin Philharmonic at one point for 10 minutes. And he taught at the Stern Conservatory in Berlin and wound up spending most of his life in Winterthur. Winterthur, you know, Scherchen was there. You remember that. A provincial town with a provincial orchestra numbering some 40 some odd players and he wrote apparently about 120 pieces according to the excellent booklet notes you always get excellent booklet notes with cpo stuff and and um you know and all that stuff is sitting somewhere in in Winterthur in some dusty attic or basement or library so they have the parts and and Howard Griffiths with the Music Collegium Winterthur decided to give a little attention to the local guy now i assure you that every single german provincial town and swiss provincial town and italian provincial mean, in europe is full of libraries piled with piles of dusty manuscripts by local composers who are completely forgotten now. Who knows? Somewhere in there, there may be a genius. I admire the effort of digging these things out and playing them and giving them a ch people a chance to hear them. It's, it's just wonderful. But some of them are just duds, and this guy was terrible. First of all, his style was really never got past say, middle Beethoven-ish. It doesn't sound anything like Beethoven. I mean, it's as weak need as you could possibly get. There's none of Beethoven's fire or passion or rhythm or anything. But, but harmonically, conservatively, that's about as far as he got. And what you get on this is that, as aforementioned, Symphonisches Tonwerk im Still einer Overture, which is 14 minutes and 36 seconds of dreary nothingness. It begins with kind of a fanfare, and then you hear a little of Wagner's Rhine-type music, do, 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 do. arpeggios on the strings, and, and this interminable slow overture. Then it perks up for a few minutes. Then all the themes get combined and wonderfully learned counterpoint, and the thing ends. But his, his, he was writing for a provincial orchestra, a small orchestra. So all of the orchestration is, you know, very limited in terms of brass and woodwinds and whatnot. He does use an English horn at one point later on, not in this work. But essentially, it's it's that that minimalist, this is what German orchestras in the provinces were. You know, a few dozen players, small, and it sounds small. He had no feeling for orchestration or how to write for a small ensemble. I mean, if you want to hear someone who could really write for a small ensemble, listen to Arthur Sullivan, whose orchestration is just sheer genius. And he was dealing with the same size forces, basically, a theater, a pit orchestra, with minimal brass, minimal winds, and he could make an astonishing sound from the most chamber music-like delicacy to a big, full, rotund, you know. There's none of that here. It all sounds sort of cloggy and thin 
And perhaps that's the Music Collegium Winterthur, which may still sound as crappy as it probably did back in, in, in Rauchenecker's day, but I don't think so. They're trying. They're, they're doing their best, and Howard Griffiths knows what he's doing. But just it's just the music itself is so uninspiring. Then we get to Symphony No. 1 in F minor, 36 minutes of generic German symphonic stuff. It has zero personality. I mean zero <laughs> personality. It doesn't have a single memorable tune. It does have an English horn at one point, um, which is nice. But, oh my goodness, there's nothing that would ever, ever make you want to go and hear it again. It doesn't show a shred of, of acknowledgement of the universe of music after Beethoven. Very little, let's put it that way. Then we get something incomprehensibly titled The Orientalische Fantasy. Um, it's written for solo violin. Rauchenecker was a violinist, apparently a very good one. Um, it was written undoubtedly for himself. It's one of those, those you know, violinists write their own music stuff. And he, it's called The Oriental Fantasy. It's for violin and string quartet. Um, and, you know, like the chanson concert sort of kind of thing, you know. Um, it's just terrible. I mean, it's attractive, it's lyrical, it's dopey and boring, and it has nothing Asian or Oriental about it at all. I mean, he just called it that. And then he wrote the same generic, boring, conservative, middle 19th century German music that you hear in the symphony and in the, the Symphonisches Tonwerk im Still Einer Overture. I can't even get that into my head to memorize it. It's 13 minutes long. He could spin it out, you know, endlessly, but ugh. So what can I tell you? I mean, it's, it's, the music fell into immediate obscurity and it deserves to stay there. And I, I, I admire these folks. I mean, the, the solo violin is Sebastian Boren when he's accompanied nicely by the Sarastro Quartet. I no, there's nothing wrong with the performances. There's just no reason to hear the music at all. Zero, zippo. So, you know, if you guys are obsessive collectors of, I won't even say minor, irrelevant composers, then, you know, Ralph Hinecker is one of them. Oh, God, I hope this doesn't become a series. Please not. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me, listening to other things, obviously. Take care.